Welcome to PBA Radio. It's Chris Guns. My guest on this segment is Jamel Herring, the team captain of Team USA, the light welterweight representer in London. He's back and he's ready to talk. Let's get him on the line. Jamel Herring, back from London. Tell me about it, man. How'd it go? Uh, you know, a bit frustrating. <laughs> frustrating time, but um, I'm glad to at least see that, you know, our, our ladies did good, but no, I'm just I'm, I'm just getting over it now, but for the past few weeks, I've just been a little aggravated with everything that's going on, especially, you know, I've been down with my performance, but it's still like the end of the tunnel, so I'm just, I'm just back in the gym and working, you know, just to um, better myself, really, and just prepare for the future. Yeah, can never stop improving, no matter what, and what was it like when you got off the plane in London and, and you saw the, the way they had the city decorated for the Olympics? What would you think? Um, it was, I just, the first thing I say, you know, I, I was just amazed because it was something I've never seen before in my life anywhere. You know, I was just surprised. Had, you know, just, I was just amazed with the, just how the village was put together alone and, you know, all the countries. And for, for, once, for once in a while, I was just amazed just to see athletes, not just from other countries, but athletes of different sports mm. so you know it was just you know an eye opener and, you know it was, a, it was a great time it was a great experience yeah who, who did you get to know besides boxers did you intermingle with um, them? I actually ran into the, the U.S. And, um, basketball team um, I spoke with Serena Williams I um, spoke with my sister also with Venus um, I see him you know Michael Phelps I spoke to him a few times I actually went to go see I actually go, went to go see him on the swim for the last time when he um when he won gold in the relay, you know, um, actually I seen Usain Bolt um, said a few words with him also. So you know, it was, it was great. It was great experience. You know, just being amongst other athletes. What are you thinking when you see Usain Bolt run? <laughs> when you see uh, that, <laughs> those legs are crazy. <laughs> We're all, you know, I was, I was going for ten years they are, but it was I mean it was kind of hard to go. You know, root against Usain Bolt. You know, think that you know anybody can even match or compare to him. So it was, it was crazy, but you know, it was exciting to, to see you know to see him compete, and then, especially for um, all you were athletes, they um, they, did, they did their best out there on the track, also. Yeah, and you met Amir Khan. You went to his gym in Bolton. What what'd you think? Oh, yeah. What did you uh, think of? Amir, uh, you know, um, Amir, you know, he's a humble guy, especially you know. When he had his um his crushing defeat at the time, and like three days later, you know he came out to speak to us, you know, and, and still put on a smile, you know, and that just showed his true character as a um as a champion. You know, he was a great guy, and I actually ran to Amir like three or four times after that. Mm-hmm. Every time, you know, every time he see me, you know, he was you know humble enough to stop talking. Hey, how you doing? You know, ask me what I'm doing next in boxing. Ask me if uh, you know if anybody was interested in me. And this, no, we were just you know talking. And, you know, just having a nice, friendly conversation. You know, so I, I got a lot of um, respect for him here. Yeah, after after his loss, that that took a lot of class to do that. Yeah, a lot of class. You know, he could easily just you know just stayed away from the public and just basically brushed us off. But you know, he came out there. He um invited us out to the um, media conference. You know, with the whole team that they were from, and he just you know he kept a smile. And he just he was just real honest with himself. And, told you know he's going to bounce back he said it's like he said in the interviews people think he should retire but he said he's still young and that's just crazy but people even think that but you know he's not going to really contemplate on it he just feels that you know he just needs a little bit more work he's going to come back um come back harder yeah. that's when you know hearing hearing that basically helped me also with my you know defeat you know it, it like that it, it really bothered me and it was like we was getting a lot of you know press like i wasn't so much worried about just the one loss. I was I was more upset at the fact, you know, when, when all the losses like, accumulated all together, and then the USA team as a whole was getting hit. That's what really bothered me. So you know, but being around in mirror, like we talked, we actually talked after the, after my own fight. You know, he basically you know set me to the you know a different a different mindset and how to really take things in. And then, you know, that's, that's kind of helped me out on, 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 on um, since then, since my own defeat. Yeah, and that's why you're the team captain. And who are you closest to on the team? Uh, I'm actually real close to uh, Marcus Brown. 
Mm-hmm. Not just, you know, but, you know, not just because we're from uh, both from New York, but you know, me and Marcus were close last year during the um, World Training Camp, and we just basically, you know, come from basically that same environment, and we easily can adapt. You know, I learned a lot from Mom. Rashid was also a great help. And even like with him also, you know, it's a man who, who gave up, you know, a, a lot of his, you know, a big part of his life to try to keep trying for this, for that Olympic medal. Mm. When people were saying that, you know, he didn't care or whatever, that was just crazy. Like, if he didn't care, why, you know, give up that much? He could have easily just went up, went to pro, but why give up that much time in your life? Yeah. You know, yeah. he had a dream, he had a goal, you know, he wanted to bring back that medal for his mother. Mm-hmm. You know, came on short. He just, you know, even... He didn't show it on the, in front of the TV and the media or whatever, but, like, deep down, he was really hurt. Mm. But, you know, he just, he just saying, I, I guess this wasn't, a, he told me, like, I guess it wasn't meant to be. So, you know, I'm just going to just focus and move on to the next level. Mm. And that's how I started, you know, looking at things. Yep. Myself. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was kind of particularly heartbreaking for Rashi Warren because he is the only man who really stuck around for three Olympics, you know? It's sad. I wish it wish he did at least meddled somewhat, you know. <laughs> wish wish he got some kind of medal. But you guys were a yeah. close team in general. And how hard how hard was it to, to get ready for the Olympics without a real coach for four weeks before the game? Um, it actually honestly it actually hit us more hit us more mentally. Because like for the most part we all stayed in shape, and like I mean, just in your, um, your interview with well, um, Coach Bashir, like you know, we all had we all had the talent. We all had you know great great guys with great talent, but you know we we didn't have enough time and experience on on that level. You know, this the Olympics is obviously the toughest competition you ever get, even you know tougher than what you may see as a pro boxer. Mm-hmm. And like you know, two weeks before you know, two weeks of camp in Colorado and two weeks in, in Baltimore isn't just going isn't going to cut it. It's like, you know, some of these we know like the Cubans and the Ukraine, you know, Ukraine and the Russians, they you know they doing dual meets and constantly boxing all year, all year round. This to prepare for the Olympics, you know, we didn't even get it. Uh, we didn't even get some of that. We probably maybe got like the World Championships. And then the continental qualifiers, and that was it. And then, like I said, we had a problem with the whole staff and everything. So it really kind of messed us up mentally because we was, you know, we was actually getting kind of worried. Like, hey, when are we actually going to get this staff? Because mm. it's getting close to that time when we we to take off for London. So, but, you know, we, we try to do our best. But, you know, you see, due to this type of system, one, it, it shows that, you know, we need help. Our program needs a lot of help. I'm not. I'm not mad or I'm not bitter towards anybody. But you know, I just, I just pray and hope that our next generation, you know, 2016 team, you know, actually pulls off what we try to pull up, pull up this time around. But at the same time, it all starts with the program. You know, the program needs to be rebuilt from the ground up. I believe. Yeah. What do you think we need to to compete at that level? Oh, uh, we gotta start. We gotta start getting more support behind our program in terms of like funding, because that was the main thing that I've been hearing for the last past few years was the funding to get us out there to those international dual meets. Like we need that experience. Like we got you, you know yourself. You, we all know that there's great talent in the country, and we got a lot of athletes that's on our Olympic team that dominated inside their country. But when it's time to go, it's time to go. You know. Out, outside of America to where, you know, look at other styles, well, you would, people would, like, people would think that, you know, we would we ain't, like, we just start a box or something, but, <laughs> but we don't, like, we don't, we don't get enough, we don't get enough help, and, you know, in terms of that international competition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's vital, vital to, to bend there and to actually know you can do it. It, it does something when you, when you proved it to yourself already, not just wondering and, and knowing you can, but you gotta really know you can by have, having done it, you know? It's hard to. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, like people are on it, like I can, you know, it wasn't the greatest showcase for some of us at the Olympics, but like you know, people I felt was like didn't they don't see the hard work you gotta put in mm. to get to the Olympics. You know, it wasn't like it wasn't like how it was back in the day when maybe you had one the Olympic the Olympic trials and okay you was an Olympian. No, now today's world you went you went that. And you gotta qualify, which you know, you gotta get international, which means you gotta get to an international experience 
before the Olympics. Mm. And that even even so that wasn't a, that wasn't enough experience to help us, you know, do do well in the Olympics. But like I said, people like so the main thing I'm getting at is people don't get in, don't realize all the hard work and sacrifices we had to make as a whole to mm. get there. It wasn't like we, it was handed to us, but like it was it was like for me in particular, it was a long year. Mm-hmm. That part of the Olympics, and it was just like, and that's why I was so upset. Like, you know, with my with my belt, you know, it, it was just in the blink of an eye, not like three rounds, nine minutes, it was it was, it was gone. It was over. That was it. Yeah, and not not only it's not only relegated to boxing, but all all the games really. But the officiating in the Olympics, what in, in boxing? How how did that strike you? The terrible officiating. <laughs> Like I said before in past conversations, like but it was just for my battle alone. Yeah, I, I get the credit. I give credit to my part. I felt you know he was just a better man, and like you know from what I was told afterwards, you know he has plenty of international experience. But I felt the, the bout, you know, should have been a little closer than what it was, especially yeah. after the first round. But you know I don't I don't make no excuses. I just learn from it. But I just feel on turn when I on that turn though on that part I'm going to is that with the fit with the um, officiating was just to me it was just ridiculous. Totally. And we all it just hurt me. To, it, I mean it was hard for me being the team captain afterwards when I seen what happened with the first bout with um, with the all arrow second mm. bout against India. Mm. That was you know that was just to me it was just ridiculous and it was just like you know if you, you know what I mean if you like. He clicked to me, and a lot of us out there, he's like, he clearly dominated this kid. You know, he, he put out everything. He gave it everything. And it's like, we just felt that before it, before it got overturned, it was like, it was just felt that it was just sad that it was just stealing these kids, just, you know, dreams, you know. You don't, mm-hmm. like, you don't know how hard these guys put in the work to get here, and you just basically just take away their dream in a blink of an eye like that. And it was just, and that, that, that's what hurt the most, you know. It's like, and I'm pretty, and I, mean, I know I even knows what we had to do to get here because they, for, for one, they make all the the rules and the qualifiers to get there. It's like for them to do that, that's what kind of hurt me. And it's just for a while, I was just kind of upset with with the um, international program. But you know, I but you know, I, I try to keep, I try to remain, you know, content as much as possible because. I see myself as a role model, and there's always there's always somebody watching what you're doing and what you're saying. And you know, there's kids that that's coming up now that they ask me for advice all the time that want to get to 2016. So I didn't want to be out there like you know bashing, constantly bashing, you know, Aiba and everything, and, and you know discouraging these kids who who are right now working hard to get there. So you know, I just try to keep a lot inside, but I just felt that. It, with all the judging, even not even just us. Like you know, when I watched the fight with the um, the um, sixty nine kilo Frenchman, also, you know, mm. I, I thought he dominated his opponent, which was from Ukraine, and they stole it. They, they took it from him too. Yeah. So it was, it was just crazy. Yep, it was terrible. One of the worst I ever saw. And what what team impressed you the most? Um, I get credit. I get credit to um to Cuba. Honestly, they mm. had a lot of Cuba. You know. I, I I just I like the way they you know how they operate. You know, it just seems like they go in there with their game plan and they stick to it. They never um they never fall under pressure. Like especially the um the Cuban at, in my way class who had one goal. You know, I I've um known him for a while. You know, he, he's a good guy. You know, I, I was actually happy for him. And, you know, he really impressed me. You know, he came back he came back in the finals and beat a kid that beat him day one at last year's world championships. Mm. Um, so that shows you his determination, you know, and will to go out there and, and go with that medal. And, you know, and, and not just him, you know, the 32-pounder, 64 kilo, you know, he, he, was, he was great to watch. Um, I felt that, I felt that um, the Cuban that Joseph Diaz had for, you know, I thought Joseph, just, you know what I'm saying, the fight should have been closer, but, mm. you know, that guy, the, that guy he fought had he had good talent, so I was just basically impressed with, my, um, with the Cuban team. But you know, last few Olympics, we all know the, the Cubans always come out there and do a great showing. So yep. it's just, it's been nothing new lately. It's, it's like the, honestly, to me, it's like the Cubans are basically where they're at, where we used where we used to be at. Yep, true, and that's what they do. That's that's what their whole boxing world consists of, really. So. They they put it all into the Olympics. Yeah. 
And and do you remember the name of the guy who who beat you? Is it gonna stay oh. with you forever, or you just <laughs> let it go? <laughs> I, I I don't remember. I don't remember the whole face and everything, but I, you know, those you know, the name it throws me off. His name always throws me off. Yeah. What, what do you What do you have to say about your own team members? Let's Let's go through them one by one. Just say something quick about all of them. Describe them to me or something. Start with Rashi. Rashi Warren. Oh, um, Rashi. You know, great leader. Um, he actually He actually chose for me to um to lead beside him for that team. You know, because he I get, he believed in me for what I could bring to the table. You know, he's just a great guy. Um, great experience. Actually, I, I actually plan on going to camp with him next month. For, um, to make um, our pro debuts, so you know we'll still we'll still be um, sticking together. But Rashid, you know, he's, he's just a great guy and he has a big heart, and he really, you know, he really loves the sport, no matter what anybody says. He takes it seriously. Yeah, clearly, making three Olympics, you know, you got to be dedicated, yeah. got to want it. And what about Joseph Diaz? Uh, Joseph Diaz, that's like you know, that's I mean, Joseph, he's always gonna be close to me because he's just like you know, he he's always been humble. He's a real humble kid. And you know he, he's always down to earth, and he, to me he's like a, he's like a little brother to me. You know he was the youngest, he's the youngest um, male on the team, but you know he, he had a big heart. He mm -hmm. went out every time he went out, even in small, he went out there, he gave it his all. You know, even he had, he had to speak, you seen it on his face. He wasn't a bitter guy. You know, he, he's he was respectful, he was humble, and he had some shit. And that he he's a classic guy. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't you know what I'm saying? Can't do nothing but respect that. Yeah, and Jose Ramirez. Jose, that's another one that's close to me because Jose, like we talk all the time, and Jose, he's seen where I came from and to where I'm at now. He, he tells everybody that he, even though it's still, in my, like in my opinion, I'm, I, I never, you know, I give credit to what credit is due. I feel like some guy is better, is better on on that team than me. But Jose will tell anybody out there that he feels that I came a long way and I improved a lot since just last year alone. You know, I feel like Jose is going to be a, he's going to be a great champion, and he he has a great style, especially for the pros. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wish him nothing but, but success in the future. And a lot of people are calling him like another De La Hoya, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And what about Errol Spence? Oh, Errol, yeah, Errol. <laughs> I, I, I love Errol. You know, I, I like a lot of him. Also, you know, he's, to me, he's like he's like a powerhouse. You know, he like he he has no quit in him at all. And he's just hungry, you know. He's like he he's um he's not upset too much upset about the, what happened in um in the in the Olympics. He's just ready just to move on also. And I feel like he's another guy who's going to definitely be a world champion somewhere. So you know, I'm, I'm almost almost gonna keep touch with him because he he made he made it sure before we left that he he said no matter what he wants to keep in touch with everybody. So you know, Earl's a good he's a great guy. He he told me if I ever. Stop talking to me. He see me. It's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Earl's a good guy. <laughs> did you did you get a lot of sparring in with him over the time? Um, no, not really, not really. I I, I didn't really. I sparred with Earl. Last time I sparred Earl was like maybe about a year ago. I didn't, I, we actually didn't spar um spar the, the, the past few um, training camps, but we had I guess because we had plenty of um, training partners anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we didn't we didn't spar. But when I did spar that one time, you know, it was it was an eye opener. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he showed me some things because I, I'm so used to just you know just boxing and you know picking opponents apart. But he, you know, he's a dog. Like he just keeps coming and coming. Yeah. You know, he. I learned. I learned a lot from him. Like every time I had a problem, I wasn't. All, I always be the type of guy who didn't like fight on the inside until I started talking with Errol. And he told me like you know sometimes you're not always gonna box. You can't always box your opponents. Sometimes you got to make it a, uh, a fight. So you know I started working with him and I just started picking up. Little things for him, little at a time. You know, I'm grateful for having people like that. You know, to take time to take their time out. You know, to help me. Like even after he qualified, you know, he wasn't the type of guy like you know. Well, you know, your own. If you make it there, I'll see you when you get there. But you know, after he qualified, he still will keep contact with me. You know, you know, I'm grateful to have people like this. Yeah. What about Terrell Gachet? Oh, Terrell. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hear much about Terrell really. Um, see, yeah, Terrell, he's a quiet guy, you know, he, he, he's a quiet, he's a quiet guy, mm. but he, he's a hard worker, you know, he's like, he's been through a lot, just in his personal life, he's been through a lot of ups and downs, and he, like, he keeps, like, his main motivation is his, um, his daughter, you know, he keeps his daughter close to his heart, you know, he, he, he's, he's been through, he's came a long way, and, you know, 
I feel I feel that's not he doesn't even get the credit that he um deserves, but he showed it. He showed a lot of um a lot of class and you know a lot of heart. And he just his um his two fights at the Olympics, and I and I wish him all the best success also. And I hope to see him too in the future. But yeah, Terrell, you know he's a quiet guy, but you know once you get to know him, he's 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 good all, he's good all, all around. He's a good guy to get to know. And Marcus Brown. Oh, like I said earlier, that's, that's like my my little big brother. <laughs> when did you guys? When did you first you know, meet? When when did you first meet him? Um, I knew him Mark for years, but since I was in the military, I didn't really, we didn't really you know speak like that. Mm -hmm. But um, we really got close. Like I said, last year's camp at the World Championships, and we just clicked. Like I knew his trainer. His trainer knew me, so you know we we knew we we knew our each other's circles, but we just had never had that time to actually bond and click. Mm -hmm. But once once we did, like you know. If you go on like anyone that's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you you'll always see majority of the pictures that we have is always me and him together. You know, we always stuck together, and you know he he um helped me get through a lot. And him being a, especially um not just but just boxing, but you know we talk and we um try we try to keep everything like you know family oriented. You know? Like when he has problems, you know, he'll just once in a, like out of the blue he'll give me a call. You know, oh, I'll call him up and we'll just you know we'll have a great we'll have a conversation. And we always, you know, we always remain close throughout this whole year. And, you know, he wants me to come out there to New York soon to come train with him. And I have no problem with that. You know, like when I go to New York, I go out, I go from Long Island, way, way out to Staten Island, and we'll just hang out, talk, <laughs> you know, have a good time. Maybe you could headline some shows together as pros someday. Yeah, cool. maybe, you know, something. <laughs> <laughs> How about Michael Hunter? Mike is a great guy. Mike, you know... Mike is another one. He he was around. He was around that era of the 2018. You know, he we all know he didn't qualify, but he could have easily just another one could just went pro. Mm -hmm. He wanted he wanted you know that not just to be an Olympian, but he wanted to basically do something special in his division. Yeah. And you know, I, I mean, kidding him from kidding him from him for that. Um, even now, he's he's still determined, like. He like he always he, he always tells me that his main goal now in the pros he wants to beat Leon Spinks's record. You know <laughs> Leon Spinks he became a world champion in what seven fights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Mike you know Mike you know, he's a, he's a, uh, determined he's determined you know he wants to basically continue the legacy that his um, his father had left before um, he his father passed away. Mm -hmm. So you know I just I just hope I just like at least another one just want to see do great things especially in his division. We know. You know, the last decade or so, the um, Europeans been basically dominating because he's going heavyweight. So, you know, with the heavyweight, it's been, it's been dominated by the Europeans. But I feel that now there's a, a time where that the Crystals are almost on their way out. So we're going to have that new, you know, generation. And I hope he's part of that, you know, that flock mm -hmm. that can bring back at least some heavyweight titles back to America. Yeah, he's big enough. <laughs> yeah, he's a big guy. And he's, he's athletic. You know, he's very, he's very athletic for that size as well. Yeah. Is he like 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, six, big guy. Yeah. And what about a bigger guy, Dominic Brazil? <laughs> oh, Dominic, you know, yeah. <laughs> Dominic, you know, I, give, I give him so much credit because he's only been doing this for three years. Yeah. And yeah. They, 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 they always say the average, you know, the average time span for being an Olympic boxer, you see, 8 to 11. You know, he's basically, you know, he's basically a quarter of that, of, of that time span. But, you know, Dom, I, I feel he, he, we all, like, I feel he has, he has a lot, he has a lot of time, but not age-wise, but he still has a lot of, you know, to improve on. He has a, and I believe he has a lot of, um, you know, potential to actually do it. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll, we'll just see with Dom. But, you know, Dom's a great guy, you know. He was, even after everything went down, he still kept, he was, he was kept um, a big heart. You know, he's a, he's a real, you know, polite, well-mannered. And, um, you know, he, he still has, he still won't have that will. I mean, he's, he's talking about going pro. I don't know, I don't know if, if he's going to go pro or uh, stick around amateur for a while. But um, okay. he's really determined to just stick around with boxing. So we'll just have to see what Dominic does from here on out. I talked to him, and I think he's going pro. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. So after your loss, you stuck around, but you, you were... You were there for your team, and and what would you think of uh, of Clarissa's performance, winning gold? Oh, Clarissa, <laughs> hello, girl. That's that. She's a beast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the most you know, 
television. I mean, you can you can see it in every one of her fights, and just in like the fire in her eyes, she was determined to go out there and get that medal. She wasn't letting nothing hold her back from getting that medal, and that's what I loved about her. Even from the time we got in camp day one, she always put in her mindset. I'm going to do what I got to do to get my medal. I'm going to get my medal. And she wasn't, she said she wasn't settling for not getting any medal. She was going for gold, and she got it. She got it. Uh, I'm, mm. very, I'm very proud of her, you know, especially, I'm, I'm just honored just to say that I was on the, the team when we had the first female middleweight gold medalist, and she was only 17 years old. Yeah. She had a lot, she had a lot, of, you know, a lot of things coming up, and you know, a lot of big things are going to be coming up in her future. And she, you know, she she knows that women's boxing isn't as big right now on the pro side, but you know, that's no, that's number one of her goals, and I'm all I'm going to be behind her 100. percent And I feel that you know she can actually bring back, you know, some she can actually bring some a lot of attention back to um, women's boxing. Because everywhere I go, people still talk about her fights from the Olympics. So I feel that you know she can actually be one of those. Those um, role models and leaders to bring women's boxing back up to a, a, you know, a higher, a higher place than what it was. Yeah, and over the next couple of years, I'm sure she'll grow into that that lady who who brings people into the sport and and people want to watch her and look around. You know, she's only yeah. 17 still. And how about Marlon Esparza? I really I expected her to win gold because I saw her fight with Christina Cruz and Christina Cruz is really impressive too. So I, I really expected I her to Christina's go all the way. Been on my another good uh, good friend of mine, also a New York native. Mm-hmm. But um, Marlon, I actually just spoke to her today. Um, about maybe about an hour ago. You know, mm-hmm. she um hits me up to check up on me, but um, Marlon, like I took her to win gold as well, also because I just seen. Like, she was going in there and giving her all spawn with just the guys. You know, she didn't <laughs> she didn't care she didn't care who you was in front of her. Like if you was there, if you got a pair of gloves on, that's all she, she just seen you as an opponent. She didn't care about, you know, your gender, male, female, she didn't care about none of that. And she was she was hungry, you know, she she been doing this, she been she been doing this since she was a little girl, like forever now as she was as she was as she was saying. And um I know at one point in time she said she was going to just after the Olympics with, um, win, lose, or draw, she said she was going to retire from boxing. And I, you know, two times I, I thought that I went for her, she really wanted to do this. But, you know, she explained that, you know, just that her body was just wearing down. And, you know, she loved the sport, but she feels like something, some, um, trying to do something, something new. Hmm. But as of, as of recently, I, I, I believe she said she's making it, she's, um, you know, deciding to come back in <laughs> 2016. So. We'll see what happens from there, but my man, she's a good, she's a good person, real, real good girl, and um, we're going, we're always gonna be close here on out. And she you know, told me first, she told me I bet she, I better allow her, I better invite her to my um, pro debut. So I'll be seeing, I'll be seeing her around more often in the future. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd be shocked if she didn't turn pro at some point. I think she just needed a, a, a break. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. I told her, I, I think she need a break. You know, you, you've been boxing. Constantly for a long time, you know. Yeah. When you, you know, when you, when you work so hard and you come up short, of course, the first thing you find you say, you know, what, I'm just maybe I'll just need to quit and do something else. But I think she, like I said, same thing. I think she just needed a break. Yeah, she had a she had a fight even to get to the Olympics. She had to have that fight with Christina Cruz, and that's not easy, you know. So she yeah. was she was probably tired before she even got to the Olympics. Okay, yeah. And 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 uh. How do how do you think that 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 will remember? Hold on one sec. How, how do you think that um that Queen Underwood took not not winning and not not bringing home any medal? Do you think she 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 was actually vocal? No, it, it hurt like, her. It hurt her a lot. It hurt her. Yeah, I felt bad. For, I felt bad for Queen. <laughs> you know. I mean, basically, America. We all know Queen's story. We all know. Mm. What Queen, what Queen's been through in her life alone, her personal life alone. And we've seen how hard it was just for her to even get to the Olympics. You know, it's been a rough year for her. And for her to go back home, you know, empty-handed, which is, uh, uh, it was just heartbreaking yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, she took, she like, even in the Olympics, she took, she took it maybe like a few days or, or you know, some time so. Mm-hmm. And then she came back around. And when she came back around, she was the queen that everyone, you know, everyone loved. Like, she was, you know, she was joking, she was mm-hmm. laughing, she was smiling. You know, she she was there like, 
even she even like I'm gonna never forget one day. Uh, it was a day when um when the um, medal ceremony. Mm-hmm. Marlene, Marlene was a little bit upset about you know just getting bronze, and you know because it, it hurt Marlene. Like I just feel like the women they took it. They I think I believe honestly they took it a lot harder than the men did. You know the women were really they really wanted that gold. I'm not mm-hmm. saying I'm not saying that none of us wanted it, but I really feel the women wanted it. Um, just as bad or more, and they showed it. So when Marlene came up short and was gone um, before she's gonna get her bronze medal, you know, Queen was the one that actually was cheering her up. You know, uh, and you would think it should be the opposite. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this is a girl who, you know, Queen has been through this a lot of ups and downs, and she, and she she's going home with nothing. But Queen, you know, as a leader, she you know she was talking to Marlene like, girl, you, you know, you should be proud of yourself. You made history. Mm-hmm. You know, you did you did something that a lot of women. Still wish they could have done. You know, you're going, you know, you're going home with a, with a medal, and you're, and you're an Olympian. So you know, she basically cheered them all in up, and, and I, I just, you know, sat back and just watched everything that was going on. And that, you know, I was really, you know, I was, I was really happy. Like, you know, that showed Queen's true character as a person and as a leader. And I'm glad that, you know, she. I'm glad that she actually came back around that time. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just, I, like I said, she's the one. I just hope. Like I, I asked her what she was going to do. If she was going to go pro or not. But um, she told me like same thing. Like she just needs a break, and she'll just, you know, she'll decide. She'll decide what she's going to do in a few weeks. But right now, she's just taking a break and just enjoying life. Yeah. If you're the, if you're the captain of the men's team, she could have been captain of the female team if they did that. But you're the captain yeah. of all the teams, <laughs> all the sexes. Jamel Herring, I appreciate your time, man. Glad to see you and and wish you luck in in the pros. Do you, do you know when you're gonna turn pro? You know when you're first. Um, right now I'm trying. I'm looking towards um October. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get it to October, but uh, you know I keep you posted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I keep you posted it. out there. But it's always it's always great. It's always good. I'm speaking to you. I'm glad that, that you had me on. All right, appreciate your time, Jamel. Thanks a lot, Jamel. Hearing everybody.